What one last important here? So in life, what happens? Tell me. Love. What happens? Love. Ah, all right. So <laughs> we're quite ready for the love. <laughs> That's good. I, it's beautiful. We were looking first for the shit. <laughs> All this stuff. So we know that in life, stuff happens. We call them life events, right? Even the most fortunate of men and women will experience from time to time setbacks. Agree? Temporary or otherwise. Just the way it is. I don't know anybody who's free of that, myself included. <clears throat> Some people may be experienced setbacks more repeatedly, okay. So we call them life events. And these life events, some of them are just not within our control. Some of them are. Surprising how many are. But some things are the current reality of the way things are. Like in your business, there may be some current realities of the way the market plays and what the market will bear and what the interest is. And that's not something you can necessarily change at this point in time, and we learn to adapt, and we learn to work with it. And some of these life events are within our control. The second aspect that we look at would be the interpretation or the viewpoint, and this in psychology we call the point of power. And this is perhaps the single most important aspect because whether it be a horrible tragedy, a small setback, our point of view, the way we internalize it, the way we interpret that experience will be the sole determinant of whether it becomes even worse or an opportunity to grow and to learn something from it and to move out of it. So the point of power, for example, um, a simple one. I'm, I, I'm doing an emotional intelligence program for one of the state of Connecticut's unions. It's actually a big one for all the administrators. And they were based at the time in Newington. And it was a small room. We had 60 people crammed in. And actually, when they first hired me, the, the workshops I did for them were like the most popular. It was great. You know, back when I was diversifying, doing that. And um, they provided a lunch for everybody. You know, the union was paying for it. And I think the state paid you know, part of it, too. And they would bring in local caters. And they had a, 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 um, like a buffet. It was delicious. I mean, it was great. We really ate well. And as we're eating the chicken, these you know, pieces, two of the guys were talking and said, wow, these are the best chicken McNuggets I've ever had in my life. And the caterer who owned the business was there, heard this and said, I beg your pardon, those are not chicken McNuggets. Those are medallions of chicken. You can charge a lot more for medallions of chicken than you can for chicken. You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's called the perception shift. The viewpoint. Marketing people now call it neuromarketing. So much of it's perception. And with all due respect, I, I, I am growing deeply concerned with what's going on on the internet. There are so many programs, so many new experts, and they're okay. Some of them pretty good, some of them good, some of them questionable, but the marketing the perception is you would think it's the second coming of Jesus, Buddha, Moses, Abraham, and Gandhi, and everybody else. Unreal perception. And I, I understand that. I had to learn to embrace that more and more in my senior years and recognize it has its place with respect to that. But that's what here, the viewpoint, the interpretation. One of our graduates, a sweet woman, she happens to be a trans medium. You know what a trans medium is? And she used to work with the police department up in um, Holyoke in Springfield. Her name is Seal. And Seal, great, um, I haven't seen her lately because she's like in her mid to late 80s and she's not driving anymore. She needs someone. But she used to come and review. And one of the and she used to help solve crimes. You know, like what you saw on the TV show, uh, Medium? Along those lines. Really, really true story. Her daughter, concerned for her health and well being, bought her a membership to a fitness club and signed her up in one of the classes. And Seal would wake up in the morning and say, oh my god, I'm going to torture class. Why did my daughter do this to me? It's torture, it and every bone in my body hurts. And she's telling the class that. And everybody in the group is kind of helping her to reframe that, saying, come on, you know, at any age, let alone your age, you need to be active physically. Your daughter loves you. Your daughter gave you a gift, spent all that money time you know, for your well-being. 
And it helped her see it differently. She still didn't love the class. She didn't get there, though. No. <laughs> love it. But she moved from torture class, oh my God, to, okay, I've got to go work on my health and well-being. So can you see in your own life how sometimes when we experience some of the challenges, how whether we continue, we follow through, whether we take action and ask for help, whether we study, get some more coaching or lessons or learning or whatever, has a lot to do with the point to do. Do we even think it's possible? Or are we stuck thinking that I'm stuck? For example, pessimist. The optimist and the pessimist. So the life event, the way we interpret it, will determine our attitude, whether we're pessimist, uh, nothing works, Murphy's Law, I'm screwed, that's it. Pessimist tends, the pessimistic viewpoint tends to think that we're stuck, that there's no hope, there's no change. Like it's permanent. The optimistic viewpoint maybe has the same experience, setback, right? But it's temporary. Maybe it's going to last for 100 years, maybe it'll last for 10 days. But it's temporary condition that somehow, some way, I'll learn because I'm determined and I'm committed to do something to take action. So hope, if we have hope, we're more likely to take action. If we're optimistic, we're more likely. In fact, there's studies coming out showing that optimists live longer lives. That optimistic viewpoint tends to be more successful. And if we keep it in the context of what we're saying here, it makes sense. And of course, action. Nothing happens until we take action. So our mission is to shift our point of view. And tomorrow we'll work with Mirror the Mind. And today, uh, shortly, we'll take a, after a pause, we're going to work with mental health cleaning. And I want to start with that before we go into all the other tools and techniques because there's something you can work on helping to create a more optimistic, hopeful viewpoint.